SpaceX Starlink's new $2,500 dish is insane. Here's why. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. We're coming to the end of some fireside so good. That smokiness, guys, that smokiness. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking space, SpaceX, Starlink, Linux, of course, all kinds of really good tech. Today, we're going to be talking about SpaceX and their new high speed, mega speed, let's call it, dish. I was talking to you guys about this about two, three months ago, that they were coming out with this extremely fast dish. And I said it was going to be right around a gigabit. And that's what they're shooting for. So this is the beginning to that gigabit speeds that I was promising you, that I said was coming and now they're here. You can actually buy this dish today. Expensive, but you can actually buy the dish. Now, is it gonna be gigabit as of today? It's not, but we'll get into that in this video. So today I wanna to talk to you guys about this a little bit because I wanna know your thoughts on it. Is it something that you'd be interested in? Because this is really big, this is big. This kind of sets aside some of the cable companies out there. And I'll tell you about that before the end of the video also and the reason behind that. I was reading a bunch of articles about this. I wanna share them with you, but as I always do, I like to dive in, put some meat on the bones. Sometimes these articles are a little bit superficial. I like to dig in and that's what we're gonna do in this video. I'm gonna give you a bunch of really good information that you're not gonna find in any of the articles of what is currently available with this new dish. Very, very cool, very cool. So anyways, if you enjoy the content, find any value in it at all, please throw the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're not, if you are, I appreciate that. Click this little notification button over here so I go live when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately, if not sooner. And if you wanna say thank you, there's a little thanks button down there. You can click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video's still free, just the same. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more SpaceX Starlink specific content, over the last 48 months, I've put together about 500 videos just for you. I'll put a link here, don't click on it yet. When you're done watching this video, go back to about here and you'll be able to see all those helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, and of course, what the why and the why behind all of it is as I always say, this channel is about the why, not just the how. So let's jump right into this article. It starts out by saying, Starlink's next leap from rugged dish to gigabit speeds. SpaceX's Starlink has been a game changer in satellite internet, especially for those in remote and rural environments. The recent release of the high-performance dish caters to users needing reliable connectivity in challenging conditions. This dish boasts an IP67 weather rating, ensuring durability against harsh weather and a broader 140-degree field of view to maintain connections even with obstructions like trees or or buildings. That is really important. 140 degree field of view. I've talked to you guys about this in the past. I told you that you don't need to cock up the dish at a specific angle anymore because there's so many satellites overhead, number one. And number two, the field of view on these dish are getting wider and wider and wider. This is the largest so far. Once again, 140 degree field of view. That's amazing. 180 is a straight line, right? This is just 20 degrees off each side. That is a major, that's a large swath of the sky. Anyways, it continues. Pushing towards gigabit speeds. Beyond hardware improvements, SpaceX ambitiously aims to enhance Starlink speed capabilities. In October 2024, the company submitted a request to the FCC to modify its Gen 2 satellite system, targeting gigabit speed broadband. This involves changing the orbital configurations and optimizing operational perimeters, including lowering satellite altitudes to reduce latency and improve post-mission disposal. The integration of advanced beam forming and digital processing technologies in the up and coming Generation 3 satellites, keep that in mind, Generation 3 satellites, is expected to provide more robust coverage and higher communication rates. Enhancing user experience with Wi-Fi 6. 
To complement these advancements, SpaceX Starlink is integrating Wi-Fi 6 technology into its systems. These upgrades offer increased network efficiency, faster speeds, and improved performance in environments with multiple connected devices. Very important. That's what's great about Wi-Fi 6 and they haven't had it until just recently. Users have reported significant improvements in connectivity and speeds after incorporating Wi-Fi 6 routers into their setups. 100% the case. Addressing hardware limitations. Despite these strides, some users have encountered limitations with existing hardware. Reports indicate issues with the Generation 2 Ethernet adapter where users experience capped speeds at 100 megabits despite having higher satellite connection speeds. In some cases, replacing faulty routers resolves the issue. These challenges highlight the importance of hardware compatibility in achieving optimal performance. Before I finalize this, I want to touch on that really quickly. If you are getting 100 megabits down and you know you should be getting more, chances are it has something to do with either the router or your dish that is not working properly. Because as of today, most people are getting above the 100 megabit speeds. In many cases, it's just simply a reboot or a factory refresh on that router and now everything will be copacetic. Sometimes the router is the issue, sometimes it's the modem in the dish itself. If that's the case, you're gonna need a replacement from SpaceX Starlink. The other thing that you guys can do that will definitely increase your speeds is buy a gaming router and buy past the SpaceX Starlink router altogether. Trust me, many people out there have taken my advice and have replied back to me through email or through comments or DM and said this has helped a massive, massive degree. And the reason being is the let's say better routers are simply faster. You're gonna get Wi-Fi 6 or you're gonna get even Wi-Fi 7, etc. And the means at which they operate are just simply better than what you're getting on the SpaceX Starlink router, which is a little bit more, let's call it cheap. Keep that in mind. If you want greater speeds, bypass the SpaceX Starlink router and get your own. And my suggestion, once again, is to get a gaming router. It's going to give you the best output possible. The article finalizes with, Looking ahead, Starlink's evolution reflects a commitment to providing high-speed, reliable internet access globally. With ongoing developments in satellite technology and user equipment, the prospect of achieving gigabit speeds is becoming increasingly tangible. It's here, guys. It's here. For users in remote areas or those requiring robust connectivity, these advancements promise to bridge the digital divide and redefine internet accessibility. Absolutely. This is a really big thing. So, I thought the article was great, but once again, like I said before, we need a little bit of meat on the bones. Some of these articles are a little superficial, a little bit light. And what I do on this channel is give you more information, dig in a little bit, dive in deep. So let's, let's get into it. This whole gigabit speed, yes, this dish is designed, it is engineered for gigabit speeds. Is that available right now? No, but we'll get into that in just a second. Price tag, $2,500. Is that high? Kinda, sorta. Remember, this is the next iteration of the original corporate dish or that business class or high performance dish that used to be $1,500. At one time, I think it was $2,000 also. This one is not $2,000, let's say $2,500. It is more expensive, but there is a lot going on here. This is once again going to be a gigabit connection. Gigabit. People don't understand how fast gigabit is from space but they've done it already. I told you a few months ago, this has been in the works and has already been happening in testing and now we see it out in the wild. When can you buy it? The answer to that is now. You could go to SpaceX Starlink's website and you could actually pick up one of these dishes. Now, like I said before, this dish is gigabit, but you're not going to be able to use it with a residential plan. You need to have a business plan. 
That said, instead of $120 per month, it is $250 per month. So it is going to be more expensive. Remember, this is a stationary dish. This is not a dish that you're gonna bring on a boat. This isn't a dish that you're gonna throw on the top of your car. This is not for mobility. This dish is stationary. It's the same thing as a residential dish, but just big. Let's call it the big ass dish, okay? It is a big dish. And like I said before, you're getting a 140 degree field of view instead of 100. 140 compared to 100. That is a big, big difference. And that's why I've said months and months ago, eventually you're gonna be able to take a dish, throw it on the ground and just use it in comparison to having to prop it up at a certain angle, point it towards the north or in the south, you're gonna point it towards the south, whatever, depends on your hemisphere. You're not gonna to need to do that anymore. You just throw it on the ground. Why? Twofold. Number one, the dish is going to be able to pick up a greater swath of the sky. Once again, 140 degrees compared to 100 degrees, number one. And number two, there's more satellites. So when you do point it straight up, you're going to get, instead of one satellite flying by, you got like 10, 15 or more. So it doesn't matter anymore. You don't really need to point it in any specific direction to get really good connectivity. And what they were talking about in this article, this is also going to provide you with better connectivity in areas where there is a lot of trees or buildings. This will be able to see a greater portion of the sky. You're not going to need to point it in a specific direction, which is really, really good. Once again, business class. This is not residential. Now, as far as the ping times or the milliseconds or your latency that everyone speaks about, lower latency is better. So currently we're seeing about 20 to 40 milliseconds latency. With this dish, they're seeing 20 to 25. And, and when we get those version three satellites on orbit, it will be sub 20 milliseconds. That literally rivals what we see with cable companies. How are cable companies going to be able to stay in business when you have a device like this? It's gonna be very difficult. The only thing that the cable companies are going to have over SpaceX Starlink once it is gigabit is that the cable companies can do bi-directional symmetrical, right? So let's say you get a 100 meg connection, you can do 100 by 100, 500 by 500. With SpaceX Starlink, even if you get a gigabit connection, it will be downstream, not upstream. Upstream will probably sit under 100 megabits even in the future. That's just simply the way it is. Also, the new kit will come with that Wi-Fi 6 router like I told you before. Wi-Fi 6 just simply gives you more connections. It gives you a better connection period when it comes to Wi-Fi. It gives you better security. There's a lot of positives going from a Wi-Fi 5 of old to Wi-Fi 6 and even Wi-Fi 7 in the future. You can buy, like I told you earlier, a gaming router and bypass this router completely and most likely you're gonna get faster speeds. Definitely when it comes to Wi-Fi speeds. As far as LAN speeds, possibly it depends on what you're doing. So in my personal opinion, if you are going to try to get the absolute most out of this, change the router out. Even though this is going to be an exceptional router, switch it to a gaming router and you're gonna get faster speeds, I guarantee it. Also, like I told you guys, it is available right now here in the US, but there's a lot of you out there from overseas, Europe, everywhere. And according to what I'm understanding from SpaceX is that it will be available here for a while and then they're gonna start slowly rolling it out right around Q4, the end of the year, internationally. So bear that in mind. If you are not in the US, you cannot buy this as of right now. It's going to take until the end of the year until it slowly rolls out into your region. Once again, Q4 is what I'm understanding. So to put a bow on all this, SpaceX Starlink is releasing a commercial grade, a business class kit. That kit is gonna be around 2,500 bucks. You can buy it now if you're in the US and you are going to get some pretty crazy speeds. My understanding, even as we speak, people are getting 300, 400, and 500 plus megabits down. That is pretty damn quick. That's now. Remember, when those version three satellites are on orbit, they're operational we're gonna see those speeds jump from four or 500 to gigabit speeds. Now, will they charge extra for that? We don't know as of yet. 
Possibly, possibly not. I personally think if you're already getting a business class account for $250 plus dollars per month, plus paying $2,500 for the equipment, give them the gigabit. That's my personal opinion, but obviously I don't work for them, right? So anyways, what say you? Is this something that you would buy? Is this something that you're interested in? Are you gonna go grab one right now? Because you can. Let me know, and if you do have one of these brand new gigabit, let's say, setups, what kind of speeds are you seeing? What are your up speeds? What are your down speeds? What is your latency? Milliseconds, I would like to know, and everyone else here would like to know. So down below in the comments, I wanna hear from you. What do you think about all this? And if you don't wanna put anything down there because you're shy, throw an emoji down there. That'd be good, good enough. At least we know you were here to the end of the video. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, throw it a thumbs up, like I said before. Don't forget to share. Sharing is caring. That's the most important part. Share with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, wherever you frequent, Facebook, whatever. I would really appreciate that so we can grow this channel. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, maybe with one of these new high-speed dishes. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.